Welcome to Arizona Business Spotlight. I'm your host, Helen Gibson. You're watching Verde Valley TV. You don't want to go anywhere. This is an exciting show. Canine Country Club is in studio. I have a very special guest, Sandra Trotman, and she's brought Honey. <laughs> I'm like, how could I introduce Honey? <laughs> honey. And when I first saw Honey, I thought of the Gremlins movie, Gizmo. <laughs> yes. So many stories. Um, you know, Canine Country Club is known for their compassion for animals here in the Verde Valley Thank in Cottonwood. You. And so Honey has a very special story about her journey. Um, could you share that with us? Sure. Honey is one of my seven adoptees mm -hmm. that I have gotten from um, the community. Honey actually was in a home with her mom who had passed away and she was there for at least two or three days before she was found and um, the fire department did phone calls because you know with her stress we didn't want to put her into the Humane Society even though it's a wonderful organization but she was very stressed at the time so they called Angie Lozano from Angie's house who called me in turn and she wasn't able to go down and pick Honey up and as soon as I got her I said she's mine <laughs> <laughs> um, I did have to wait for the family to come out and they surrendered her to me so that was just really happy because I didn't want to give her back up no no but. so Canine Country Club here in Cottonwood yes and we can find you online at ccc.azmine.com. Yes. I love that. So the CCC obviously is Canine Country Club, AZ Mine. It makes me think of a uh, little honey Mine. story. <laughs> Mine. And Mine. when you're bringing your pet, your animal, it's really one of your kids. It is. <laughs> you know, you're going on a trip or vacation. It's always that stress level when you have animals. It's like, where are you going to leave your doggy? So tell us a little bit about Canine Country Club. What can we expect when we bring our um, extended family? Well, what I tell everybody is it's not worth having a kennel if you're not secure and happy. You don't want to go lay on a beach in Hawaii and be stressing out about your animal. Um, with Canine Country Club, my staff has been doing it for quite a long time. We also take care of subacute animals. So that means if they're released from the veterinarian, they're not well enough to be at the vet, but um, they're not good enough to go home because everybody has their everyday life and work habits. They can come to us and we get them a little bit better. We also take in um, a lot of dogs of people who, you know, they're getting kicked out. They have nowhere to go. And instead of surrendering their animal, we'll take that animal in. Um, you know, it's just all these stories I hear. So it's, you know, Canine Country Club, it, it sounds exclusive, but it's it's supposed to be a nonprofit. <laughs> yes, I know. My husband probably wants to kill me. <laughs> um, yes, that's how I've gotten seven dogs, three birds, three cats. One of my cats is another story with us. Um, he stayed with us for so many years as a boarder, and his father couldn't deal with doing. He became a diabetic. And of course, he came to me and I said, I'll teach you. No, 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 I can't do it. So now I have a diabetic cat yeah. and um, I have a few diabetic dogs. That's um, compassion, though. So this is more than just a business. It's Ariz We're watching Arizona Business Spotlight. And so, I mean, Sandra, running a business, there's all those elements, right? There's, you know, a storefront or marketing and letting people know your brand. Mm -hmm. But what I want people to hear today on the show is your heart, and I've already heard that in, Thank you. you know, going in and, and rescuing these animals and giving them, I just look at Honey and she's in her forever home arms. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, a lot of other things we do is, and I say about the subacute is because, you know, we do get animals that come to board with us that have a lot of medical issues. So you want somebody who's there from 7 in the morning, which we are, until 8, 9, 10, sometimes o'clock at night. Um, we don't live on premise, but I'm two blocks away, hooked up to the alarm systems. Right. Um, and we're there constantly. We do not leave these animals alone. They're constantly getting love, affection. It's a small, intimate kennel. Yes. When I started, I started in a quite large kennel, and it was very nice. It was a beautiful facility, but the animals were like numbers. 
And a lot of times they were left a group of them alone in a room, and it scared me because they're animals. Yeah. I have seven that stay in my house, plus three cats, and like I said, and they're just mine. And, you know, sometimes I have to watch what's going on. Right. So, you know, when you find these um, kennels that just throw everybody in a room, it reminds me of Chandler, and it scares me. Right. We have a professional kennel. Each one, they can play together, they can hang out together, but at night they go into their own private suites in their spaces. Um, they have air conditioning, if, and it's an intimate kennel. That's why I yes. like it. I, you know, everybody's built another building. I don't want to. No. If I build another building, I can't afford to pay for people to be back there, so who's going to get neglected? My animals. Right. Um, we do do grooming and daycare. Um, grooming, I will say, if there's anybody out there that needs it really bad and you can't afford it, you know, I let it go for a lot of my clients, the older women. I say, your dog's a mess. Oh, I can't afford it. Get, call me. Oh. <laughs> Get it done. You can pay me later. Right. And if you can't, then, you know, Angie has a pookie fund. It's her favorite <laughs> little pookie fund. I'm on Angie's board. We collaborate a lot together. Um, I believe Angie's pookie was one of her first dogs, I don't know the whole story, but that is, she puts money up there for people who are in need. Can people donate if they want to? Or to help? Yeah, they can donate to Angie's Pookie Fund. She's nonprofit. There you I, go. I, like I said, you know, I t gotta pay my bills. Yes. But with all my animals, I don't trust anybody else to take care of them than right. my staff. So if I was leaving on a trip and, and I have two dogs, mm -hmm. uh, I would call 928 Six three nine one six two four, and then what's the process? For the girl's going to ask you if you have all your shots. We would prefer the shots to be given at least two weeks prior to coming in. The reason for that is, first of all, a dog like Honey, you can't give three shots in a row. No, you'll OD on shots, and right. it's not good for her. So maybe she can go and get a rabies one day, and then her Bordetella. And I swear, I think Bordetella should be a um, mandatory because it's. It's not when they call it the kennel cough shot. That's old term, especially out here. If you go to a dog park, if you um, are just walking along the side wow. and you sniff, you dogs fence to fence. Um, there are so many grooming shops, uh, playgrounds. Anytime one dog is near a group of dogs, you may get Bordetella. Now, Bordetella also, if you squirt it up the nose or put it in the mouth, the pharmacies say it takes, um, it goes right into the system and it is better for you. The injectable takes a week. Injectable isn't going to um, get everybody. You right. Know? Like where the other one is, it's an airborne. Right. So we don't want to see you for two weeks. No, <laughs> you know? no. We have a quarantine spot that we will put the animal in. Mm -hmm. It's a nice place. It sounds horrible, but it's a nice no. little run. Mm -hmm. They're not nose to nose if it's an emergency only. Emergency only. So do they have their shots and then the time that they need to be there? Um, and then you said you have a daytime. So if somebody's yeah. working out there watching right now and they need a place to have their It's daycare. Dog, Again, daycare. If I you love want a doggy it. daycare. If it's a small <laughs> dog, we have little rooms in the front. Everybody should come. We haven't, that building's been there 25 years and I'm slowly fixing it up more and more. Mm -hmm. um, we have bedrooms in the front if they come in for daycare. One thing that my shop does is when your dog comes in, he goes outside. He doesn't get put in a crate. He goes outside. He goes to the bathroom. He gets to run around, get some exercise. If it's nice, we'll leave him outside with water and a blanket in one of the runs, not the kennel, in the grooming section. Right. Um, this way they're not shoved into the tub, then into a grooming situation. Right. You know, it's easy on them. They can come. They can get their energy out. They can... Uh, go to the bathroom because you don't want them doing that yeah. on the tub or on you right, or on your yeah. table, well, which happens a lot. Right. Um, you know, so I mean, it, it's a very non-stressful environment. It really is. If, if we have dogs that, I have a lot of dogs that used to have to go to the vet and they'd have to be put down to be groomed. Right. Well, the vet sends them over to me and it's just time, love and patience. That's it. You know. And you ha you have an abundance of that just listening to you. <laughs> well, the vet like, sends them. Sometimes I want to go, "Don't send any more." Yeah. You know, thank you. Okay, so getting the right animal. Uh -huh. I feel like you could take any animal and be great with it. 
pet finder. Tell us a little bit about, oh. about if somebody's out there watching right now and they're thinking about getting an animal dog. I like the fact that I could take my animal to you to have a pet sitter while mm -hmm. I'm at work. It's better than them being left home alone. Well, you mentioned There's the daycare. If you get yeah. a bath or a groom, you get the day for free. Oh, okay. Yeah, as long Done as you pick up by four. By four, yeah. okay. So, okay, so I want to get a pet. You mm -hmm. seem like you're the expert, at least to me. <laughs> so, well, so Sandra, what, where do we go? What do we do? I always suggest to everyone, um, go on PetFinder.com. There is a survey. The survey is about you, the pet owner, your lifestyle, where you live, your work hours, your vacation habits. It's all about you, nothing about the animal. And it spits out the right type of animal for you for this time of your life. You know, people go, oh, I had a Cocker Spaniel, or I used to have this. Well, that doesn't fit into your life now. Right. You know. What um, kind of animal now? I love that. Doing an assessment, um, Sandra, and finding out exactly what kind of animal works for you. It goes deeper than that, yeah. though, Helen. It really goes into the fact of, you know how all these animals get put into the humane society and then they're returned? Well, people don't understand the breed they're getting. They have no idea, they don't investigate it, they don't take that into consideration in their life or you know what's going on in their social being right then and there. Mm -hmm. So um, it really helps and it helps uh, keep down the returns on animals or animals that are surrendered. Things like that. Yeah. But I know if there was a situation like that, Canine Country Club is there for, <laughs> for we you. We have, if anybody is in desperate need, need, and I say true desperate need, Yes. don't wait. I do it a lot. For a lot of my we'll older clients, yeah. we'll find a home. But what we want to do, it's like Red Rose, we don't want to find a home. We want to be able for you to keep your animal. We'll hold on to them until you get your life in order. Right. And then we'll give them back to you. If you don't, then we will find the perfect home. We don't just turn them over. Sandra Trotman, Canine Country Club. It was such a pleasure. And honey. Thank you. Thank you. Helen, thank honey? you for having us. Honey, honey you're all bye. Bye. Oh, bye, honey. <laughs> We'll see you next time Thank here on you. Arizona Business Spotlight.